Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this video, I'm going to show the practical way of taking the Janaba bath, except that I'm not going to be taking the bath. The entirety of the ahadith containing the Prophet Janaba bath have been reported by just two of his wives. They are our mother Aisha, ta'ala anha, and our mother Maimona bintul Harith, ta'ala anha. I'm going to pick one hadith per each of these two noble women, and I will read in Arabic text, and I will read the Arabic text, translate each of the hadith into English, and then give my explanation based on the content of both hadith. The hadith I'm going to be explaining are the ones that have been recorded by Al Imam Bukhari and Al Imam Muslim in their collections. So let's go with the first hadith. An Aisha ta radiallahu ta'ala anha on the authority of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She said, "Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam idha tasala min al janaba." Whenever the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam intends to take the janaba bath, he starts by washing his hands. So this is what he starts by doing. He washes his hands. And I'm going to explain why I'm not dipping my hand in the bucket yet. So he washes his hands just as we do whenever we want to perform ablution. So after washing his hand, the Prophet will perform ablution just like he does for salah. And this is the evidence that Janaba bath has no special format of ablution. Some people think that for Janaba bath, you have to wash or wipe the uh, limbs for ablution just once. This is not correct. This hadith says, Thumma salah. He performs ablution in the manner that he does for salah. So it could be one one or through, it could be two two or through, it could be three three or through. You could wash some part once, some part twice, and some part three times. You can alternate. All are allowed. So after performing ablution, uh, like he does for Salah, Thumma yukhallilu biyadehi sha'arahu. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wet his fingers and rub his air with the fingers. So he rubs his hair with the fingers to ensure that the wetness in his hand gets to the root of his hair. Hatta ida zonna annahu kwad arwa basharatahu. So when the Prophet has realized that the root of his hair has been properly wet with the water in his fingers, afadu alay ilma. The Messenger of Allah will pour water on his head like this. So he pours water on his head. Thereafter, he would pour water on his entire body. This is what has been reported by our mother Aisha. Now let's go to that of our mother Maimona Bitul Haris. She said, Once I placed the Janaba water for the Messenger of Allah وسلم, in the bathroom, فَأَكْفَ أَبِيَمِينِهِ عَلَى يَسَارِهِ مَرَّتَيْنِ أَوْ ثَلَاثًا So the Messenger of Allah Sallam bent the bucket like this, or the bowl of water, poured water on his left hand, and poured it on his right hand to wash his two hands. So he poured water with his right, like this, on the left, فَغَسَلَ يَدَيْهِ And he washed his two hands, مَرَّتَيْنِ أَوْ ثَلَاثًا Twice or three times. Thereafter, he poured water on his private part and washed the entirety of his private part and any other place around this, this circumference where he felt that the impurity of Maniyu may have touched. So he washed his private part. Thereafter, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, rubbed his hands on the floor or on the wall of the bathroom twice or thrice. I will explain why he does this. So, he rubs his hand on the floor, I will hide it, or on the wall of the bathroom twice or three times. Thereafter, he puts water in his mouth, throw it around, and throw it out. And sniff water with his nose. So, mother, mother, put water in his mouth, 
throw it around, throw it out, was turn shako, and then he sniffs water with his nose. Summa wasala wadiyahu wa zero'aihi. And then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam washed his face. He washed his face and his two hands to the elbows, like this. Like this. He washed his face and his two hands to the elbow. After he had done this, summa afado ala ra'si ilma. Then he poured water on his head. Like this. He poured water on his head. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Summa wasala sa'ira jasadihi. And then he bathed his entire body. He poured water on his entire body. Summa tanaha. Then he moved away from the spot where he had taken the bath. Summa tanaha. Then he moved away from the spot where he had taken his bath. Wa ghasala rijilayhi. And he washed his two feet. And he washed his two feet. So this is a hadith of our mother, Maimona bin al Harith, radiallahu ta'ala anha. So from both hadiths, let's get the practical way of taking the Janaba bath. The first thing is to get a clean water. A clean water in this context refers to a water that is pure and purifying. That is a water that has not been contaminated by any substance that has changed any of its color or odor or smell. So we have a clean water. What do we do? The first thing is to pour the water like this on our left hand and then wash our hands together like this three times. And this is based on the hadith of Abu Radallahu ta'ala anhu that he said, Prophet Salama said, if any of you intends to perform uh, purification, let him not dip his hand into the water until he has washed it thrice. So we have washed the hand three times now. What is the next thing? The next thing is to wash the private part. So you can now put your hand in the water, pour it on your private part, and ensure that you wash the entire area of your private part, especially where you think that the semen might have touched. So you wash the entire area of the private part so that the impurity would be removed. After doing this, the next thing is to rub your hands on the floor. So you can rub your hands on the floor of the toilet, or on the wall of your toilet. But nowadays, because of the nature of our toilet, because the private toilet was sandy, so it was easy to do that in order to remove any impurity from the hands. Nowadays, because of the nature of our toilet, we can resort to using soap. So take uh, a soap, a tablet soap or a liquid soap, put it on your hand, wash your hand properly. If there is no soap in your bathroom, then you can just wash your hand with water and ensure that you wash it properly to remove any impurity therein. The next step is to perform ablution. The person will perform ablution like he does for solar. So let's perform ablution. You wash your hands three times. You can do it one time. You can do it two times. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that the least is once and the most is thrice. Then you put water in your mouth. Mm. That is, you throw it out. You sip the minutes, you save it out. You can do it like this. It could be once, it could be twice, it could be thrice. The next thing is to wash your face. Put water there. And if you have beard like myself, make sure that you put water in your beard too, so that you wash everything properly. It could be once, it could be twice, it could be thrice. Then the next thing is to wash your hand from the fingertip to the elbow, like this. From the fingertip to the elbow, it could be once, it could be twice, it could be thrice, for both hands. You start from the right and then the left. This is based on the hadith of our mother, Aisha, that Allah Ta'ala Anha, that Khan and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yu'ujibuhu atayamunum, fi tana'ulihi, wa tarujulihi, wa kuhurihi, wa fi sha'nihi kulli. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to prefer to start with the right. Anytime he is wearing his sandal or he's combing his hair, or is purifying his body and in all of his affairs. So we start from the right and then to the left. Then we wet our hand with water and wipe over our head from the front to the back, from the back to the front. And then we also wipe our ears, after which we now wash our feet. In washing our feet, we ensure that we run our fingers through the toes and then we wash the heels properly. So the right leg and the left leg like that, it could be once, it could be twice, it could be thrice. Now, having done this, what is the next thing? The next thing is to run our fingers through our air, especially if one is airy. 
So wet your finger with water, run it through your air if you are airy, but if you are not airy, then there is no need for this. And after doing this, take water with your hands, splash it on your head three times. Splash it on your head three times. Ensure that water gets to the root of your air. After this, the next thing is to pour water on your entire body. Some people say that one is to start from the right side after completing, so you divide your body into two, from the right side to the left side. There is no evidence for this as far as Janaba bath is concerned. No specific evidence that says you have to start from the right side to the left. The general evidence is the hadith quoted earlier that our mother Aisha Dalla Ta'ala Anya said, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ يُعْجِبُهُ أَتَّيَمُّنُ فِي تَنَعُلِهِ وَتَرَجُّلِهِ وَتُهُرِهِ وَفِشَعْنِهِ كُلِّ The Prophet used to start from the right side. So if you start from the right side, no problem. But in all of the ahadis of the Janaba, he would pour water on his entire body. So you, all you have to do is to pour water on your body. Uh, you could take the bucket at once, whip. You could also take a bowl and pour water on your body and ensure that water gets to all every part of your body if you are taking the bath under a shower in fact that is even easier all you have to do is to stay under the shower and allow water to run itself through your body now on the issue of whether one is supposed to wash his feet while performing ablution earlier or is supposed to delay the feet until after the ablution scholars have two opinions the first opinion is that the Prophet would delay washing the feet until after his Janaba bath, which is according to the hadith of our mother, Maimonah bin Al-Harif. The second opinion is that the Prophet would perform the complete ablution as mentioned by our mother, Aisha Dalla Ta'ala Aniha, but because the bathroom where he took his shower was sandy, so there's every possibility that the sands would have fallen over uh, his legs, and that is why he would move a bit from the place where he stood while bathing and then wash his feet again. And this is the opinion that I find more convincing. So the person will perform the ablution in full because one of the conditions of ablution is that there has to be taritib and muwalat. It must be done sequentially, and then it must be done immediately after each other. So delaying, the, delaying washing the feet until after completion of the Janaba bath seems not to be in line with this condition of al muwalat. So as a result, what is uh, better, what Allah Ta'ala Alam, is to complete your ablution ab initio. Then if you feel there is death on your feet, you may wash your feet afterwards. But if there is no death on your feet, there is no need to repeat washing the feet. So this is how the Janaba bath is to be taken. The ablution performed during the Janaba bath is valid for any salat if it is not voided by any of the things that void ablution, such as urination, releasing of flatulence, among other things. Somebody may ask that what if I mistakenly touch my private part while performing the Janaba bath? It does not invalidate your ablution according to the more correct of the views expressed by the scholars of Islam. Unless if you deliberately try to stimulate and arouse yourself by touching your private part repeatedly. But if it were an accidental touch, then your ablution is still intact and you can go out and perform salat with it. Wallahu ta'ala alam, I hope this helps. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi.